Hello everyone, I'm Hugo. And welcome back, because I'm Jake. And this is Jake Reads Your Comments number Super Cordial Jake. <laughs> okay, today we're here to read some of your comments and Jake and I are going to respond to them. Salutations. So, let's go. <laughs> this was on a chick tract. Priscilla Fuentes says, You are disgusting and vile. Your mockery is just too much. But in the end, you will give an account to God, Jesus, for your mockery and distortion you present to the sheeple who are blind and ignorant. So sad. Over, under, mm, 50% odds that she voted for Trump. Oh, 100%. Okay, well, I say, that, under... I say this because her last name is Fuentes. <laughs> oh! Right, yeah. I was going to say over... But she did say so sad, which is close! I was going to say over, under 50%. She lives in Alabama today and is more <laughs> likely to vote for more because of the child molestation oh, stuff. Oh, oh. Man. Also, she said the word sheeple. So, like, yeah. what are the odds that she's an Alex Jones viewer? 47.5%. That's pretty close. You know how I calculated that? Oh. With the brain juice! It's on sale! Infowars.com! You know Mike Cernovich <clears throat> has a lisp? No. So I've been tweeting him with lisp Mike Cernovich quotes recently, and he hates it. He, uh, yeah, he has, like, a, a big tweet thread about how much he hates it. Oh. And, uh, so that makes me real happy. Well, he should talk normal, then. Yeah. He also said, don't make fun of dis disabled people. He considers a lisp a dis disability, and also throws around the word retarded a lot. Does he know who the president is? Oh. No, I'm talking about the fact that Trump literally made fun of a disabled oh, person. Oh, okay, I thought you were, okay. Yeah. It can work both ways. <laughs> Mark Hermanson, I really like when you add in historical research behind what you are reading. And that's from a recent Bible study where we were talking about uh, the, I believe, when Nebuchadnezzar yep. took over Correct. Israel? Yep. Uh, it was uh, the end of Jeremiah, I believe. Yep. And, and I was, I got this, uh, I know a lot of people really like the history stuff. And I think we like doing the history stuff. Would you guys like more history-oriented content? Well, the thing is, we I think we do, and it's relevant just that often especially during the first five or so books of the bible there was a lot of his yeah. history stuff you could look at mm -hmm. and then we got into a little more abstract stuff that <laughs> you know what i mean yeah more like... laws and rules and then sure you... i'm just asking like in general like if you found like a good documentary or something that oh. had a more historical like maybe a something about the kkk which is Involved with Christianity at the time very sure. heavily. Yeah. Is that something you guys would be more interested in? Because I know that we like the history stuff. It can just get a little s sludgy yeah. at times for us if it's just too heavy. Yeah. But we haven't done it in a while. So uh, if you guys have any interesting historical oriented uh, things maybe you want us to review, I think that'd be fun. Yeah. Alexander Englehart. So if no, it's one... Engelbert, oh, sir. Engelbert, I'm sorry, I already yeah. read it. So, I was... <laughs> so if no one is allowed to have guns, then all the criminals out there will immediately just stop trying to acquire them because of the law, right? Hugo and Jake. This is from the Poor Revolutionist Chick Tract, which is even better because he's what he's watching this and agreeing with Jack Chick. That's funny. Which makes me, which makes me really happy. Firstly, um, I'd like to point out there. I don't think I've ever said. I don't think, at least not. Um, on the show, maybe when I was like 14, said like, no one should ever own guns. Yeah. I'm I okay with people owning pistols and stuff. Yeah, some stuff, yeah. Uh, I actually have a very specific gun plan, but go ahead. But <laughs> this kind of stuff where it's like, oh, uh, you're gonna outlaw guns, criminals get them. The, the point of like outlawing certain guns or certain magazine restrictions or whatever aren't, it's not the pretense that like criminals like don't want them and wouldn't attempt to. The point would be the manufacture of those things would slow or stop. Yeah. And you can't, and then the like, just because they want one doesn't mean they can get one at a certain point. Or the bootlegs that they would get, the black market guns they would get, yeah. would be ridiculously expensive and crime overall would still sure. slow it down. No one you is saying... You guys remember that scene in Dark Knight where Harvey Dent disarmed the criminal? <laughs> it's just like that in real life. No one is saying certain laws on guns would 100% eliminate guns. Yeah. I don't even want to eliminate all yeah. guns. I think there's a lot of utilities. We're saying that specific kinds of guns or yeah. magazines sizes or whatever or even just background check stuff like that to see if you yeah. can get a gun if you have a fucking mental illness yeah. and even if and making that a more um i was gonna say more perfected a more reasonable system uh for the people involved because obviously the last 
big one, not the last one that happened. The last one happened today with seven people in various areas. But uh, the last one that happened where the guy escaped the mental institution and whatever and got a gun and all that shit uh, with the church. Um, it was recently. I can't believe... See, the thing is, you're already forgetting. Uh, <laughs> well, that that was a basically a clerical error, and that's how that happened. But I think just making the whole thing a, b a better system is good. But as far as, like, specific... Do I want to take your guns? I personally don't want to take your guns. I would like a buyback program for people yeah. that have, um, like, pay the retail price. I think that's what that, Australia it did. It is what Australia yeah. did. Um, have a buyback program if you have a license for it. You can buy it back if it's technically illegal because what I would change is to guns with utility. Not just any gun. It says you have the right to bear arms. It doesn't say you have the right to bear any arms. Yeah. It's a, so a guns with utility, stuff like for hunting, so bolt action rifles, I think magazine capacities at six or lower, I think is reasonable. Um, and things that take more than like one second to clip in, um, because a bolt action requires you to, you know, have motions. Pump action shotguns are useful for turkey hunting and self defense for homes. Pistols in general pistols are Pistols in general. And I say revolvers though, because of the reload time specifically, <laughs> not the magazine or the clip, but I am willing to budge on that. To get the other ones off the street, but but pistols are most of the gun violence, I am, and that's my problem. I don't have a problem with pistols for the most part because pistols are a mostly defensive weapon. Movies give us an impression that pistols, like, in like oh, you shoot. can snipe people. Yeah, no, no, no. Pistols, you got to be real close. Well, pistols are mostly a defensive the weapon. The thing is, though, the clip sizes is what the problem is because you can just go, and I've done it before, not a drive by, but I've shot at targets. Obviously, uh, you can shoot a fuck ton of bullets really oh. fast out of those things. I understand. And in our, the area we live, drive bys are common not where we precisely live but a few miles that way yeah uh they're common and it's almost always uh nine millimeter pistols and that's just how it is so i think if it doesn't have if, if it exceeds utility thresholds and we can discuss that at any other time but uh some people are like hey uh some farmers need ar-15s for coyotes you know what if you're a farmer you have a license for your farming equipment you have all that prove it come down get your ar-15 Okay. Absolutely fine with that. That's if it has fine. utility to you, I don't care. If you're a military member uh, and you have standard issue weapons, okay. It's not going to stop all gun violence. It's not even going to stop the capability of just the same size mass shootings. But I guarantee you, deaths will fall. My favorite anything about the gun issue in mm -hmm. America is the Onion headline that they run <laughs> pretty much whenever there's a mass shooting. Sure. And it's Nothing, there, nothing could have been done to prevent this, say, people in only place in the world where this regularly happens, or something like that. I don't know the answer. I understand that there are gray areas, yeah. but 3%. it's pretty clear what's happening here is not okay. And I believe it was... And not this, these numbers might be wrong, but it was pretty close to this. It's 3% of Americans own 50% of the guns. That doesn't shock me. Right. Um... It's not making you safer. I mean, objectively. If you think it makes you safer, just look at the t statistics, and it doesn't. It, more guns should make you safer, if that were true. And if that were true, I'd be fine with it. But it's not true, because I'm a data-driven person, if you can't tell. So, if you can come up with a better solution, and you still get to keep all your guns, I'm fine with that. I don't care what you have. I just, I don't like the idea of having a thing, and some people are going to say, well, we should ban cars, more people die in cars. When you can ride your gun to work, you have a point. Also, but since you can't... <laughs> Although that's a funny visual, someone riding an AR-15 like a like a witch broom. Also, there are very stringent regulations on who and who hey, can if, drive. There's if, licensing. If, if you had to be not only regularly licensed, which uh, we, we can talk about that if if uh, that's actually upheld very often yeah. because of the you know gun shows uh, and pawn shops, uh, but liability insurance is a thing I need for my car, and you don't need for your gun. I, I don't know. I think these are all things that we could talk about, and it doesn't have to be a flame war. Even though I know you guys are all, you got your jimmies in a bunch right now anyways, and you're freaking out, and you're like, ah, don't take my, I don't, want to, I don't want your guns. I want people to stop killing people with guns. And if you can decide a way to keep your guns and do that, that's great. But you can't, because that's the problem. <laughs> Get ready for the dislikes, boy. Oh, I'm ready. It's okay. I know a yeah, lot of our it. audience are 14 and going through the libertarian phase. <laughs> From our Discord, link in the description. Gyrus says, hey Hugo, 
How can you stand idly by while parents that you know like family brainwash their kids into believing this horseshit of religion? I know my sister will be teaching her kid to follow in Christ and it angers me so much. Yeah, I could tell it angers you. So, with taking the emotion out of it, how do you deal with, or not out of it, but this level of emotion? Oh. Uh, how do you deal with, because I know that your girlfriend's sister teaches her kids that stuff, and I know I have family members that teach their kids all sorts of crazy, to me, shit. How do you deal i guess i guess this is me personally i guess it's never bothered me that much because no. i had it about as rammed into my head as can be humanly expected i went to religious school yeah. you know the school i went to yep. in elementary was very religious my parents are both religious yeah i was told it's all true and i still wound up here so i guess yeah professionally a non-believer what do you like what do you, <laughs> especially considering what do you want to do with that feeling you have what are you going to do right it's their kid it's perfectly within their rights to teach them yeah. basically whatever they want i mean it's not illegal to teach you don't yeah. need a license to be a parent either <laughs> uh, so. I, I also <laughs> that wouldn't be the worst thing to <laughs> at, at a certain point the population threshold might need that yeah <laughs> but uh i don't know i i waffle on this too because you should be able to raise your kid within a certain Threshold, and I think, I think that's what's what's considered. We have a threshold of parenting. You can't kill your kid, but you can spank him on the ass, which I disagree with, but that's a thing you can do. Uh, you can also feed them vegan or feed them, you know, the diet they were meant to eat because they're omnivorous, uh, which I don't find either to be abuse necessarily, although the, the constant threat of hell I do find abusive personally. But at the same time, is it different? It's not illegal to threaten your children all the time with corporeal punishment or taking their shit away or grounding that's not and i think that's just as damaging if you scream at children all the time uh, so it's a gray area for me personally i would wait until they're teenagers and if they ask you stuff or you know young young people uh, they could be 10 12 whatever uh when they start asking you questions answer honestly i don't think but uh, I, proselytizing to them about your non-belief I feel is just as bad as proselytizing to atheist kids if you were a Christian personally it's I, not your kid yeah yeah, yeah I get that rough. now again if they're if they're like adult children of, oh, yeah. of your uncle to have a conversation All they're adults rough. yeah I, they're adult and yeah even if like past like 14 15 I mean they're yeah, yeah. Like, once you, you can, can have conversations once they're, once they're you know uh getting hand jobs I think <laughs> or giving or giving, yeah. Getting or giving, uh, getting diddled or getting tugged. Um, yeah, that's about the time that I think you just start talking to them like normal people because they're about that. Their higher functioning isn't really there and they're retarded. But uh, they can at least have the conversation. It's, I, don't, I don't feel like it's grooming at a certain point. You know what I'm saying? I know. It, I it is a little gray. I don't know if you can tell that we're both kind of like, oh, about this, but... It's because I'm... It's because, on the one hand, I can morally object to something while realizing it's not within my power or right to tell someone else yeah. what they can or cannot do. Yeah. Because, as a society, it, it's been agreed upon, and whether you like it or not, we're all confined to the society and time in which we are. Sure. It has been decided that certain things are okay and certain things are not, and you work within those. Sure. Like, for instance... Do I think it would be a better scenario if on Earth there were no religion? Absolutely. But I'm not willing to go. None of you can believe in anything other than what I believe. Yeah. Because I feel like that's just incorrect for me to do. I feel like it's morally objectionable to force any sort of thinking process on a person. However, I don't think it's morally objectionable to like persuade them. But I don't consider consider children people, so they don't count <laughs> until they're like you know hand job age. Also from the Discord, buff steel flex. You stole my thing. I already, I already yelled at them, by the way. Oh, good. Yeah. Dear Hugo and Jake, who is the verklempt child that replaced Jake <laughs> in the latest salty video? That was actually uh, my girlfriend. Yeah, she She's... didn't. She actually didn't want it. There was no reason she was in the the Hasidic outfit other than I. I should have known. You sprung it on her, and she's a she's a, a female person, right. adult, and she's like, I don't have my face on. You know, she didn't put makeup on. I or forget whatever. because I do this without showering. Some days, some days I'll do this. Like I shower yeah. every day, but some days I'll do this before I shower. Sure. I'll do this, go yeah. home, and then I'll do some work, and then I'll shower. So I guess I just don't think about it. For instance, I don't know if you can tell, I haven't showered yet today. Me neither. Still fuckable. I, usually, I like to shower at night. Still fuckable. Still fuckable. 
Maybe not the smell, but you know, the looks aren't as bad as they used to be. <laughs> From also the Discord, Liz, I finally got a free month trial on Pure Flix and it looks absolutely ridiculous. I can't wait! When are you gonna start doing movie reviews again? And if possible, can you announce what you what the next one will be? I like to watch them before I watch the reviews. The movie reviews are always my favorite. I agree. I think the movie reviews are our our favorite as well, but they take uh, just a long time, a lot of work. Yeah. So we try to spread them out. Yeah. So the last from Salty that was like last week. I believe next week we're going to be yeah. doing one. Not technically a movie review, I guess. Right, More right. of a show review, although it comes in movie form. Yeah. Uh, the next one we're going to do. We're definitely looking at a movie. We were actually discussing this the last two days. What we're going to do, if you can find a definitely legal copy of Let There Be Light with starring Kevin Sorbo, not the old one, not the documentary. But the new Let There Be Light, produced by Sean Hannity, uh, legally, uh, we might uh, we might have some business there. Um, other than that, because it's still in theaters, um, we have a bunch of DVDs that were sent to us. We have a bunch that you got from Brad over yep. at uh, Cinema Snob. Uh, we have just a bunch that we had independently. So we have a lot of movies. We're going to pick one and probably do one this Friday. I would love to do a review this Friday. So... I don't know which one it is, though, so stay tuned on Twitter, because that's when I'll let you know, most likely. From our last chick track, Isaac Sabalos? Mm-hmm. Or Kebayo. Or Kebayo. Oh, that, you're it right. It depends. It's probably that. Depends. Yeah. <laughs> I know this isn't the place, but I'm living in Fresno, California with my brother, and he is an ignorant Christian. He's calling me stupid because I don't have a job, and he has a degree in psychology, so that makes him smarter than me. And he's saying that because of my arguments are invalid. If anyone knows of that, my arguments are invalid. I don't know what that means, but... That, that sentence, I mean, uh, I can't live here anymore. If anyone knows of atheist charities that help people get on their feet in Fresno, California, please link them to me. I can't live here anymore. So I don't know. It, it kind of sounds like... Uh, it, it sounds like he's saying your arguments are bad, so you can't live there anymore. I don't... And then, no, the second, and then the second part sounds like you can't bear to live there anymore. So I took this as both just in case, and if you actually needed help, I looked. And yes, there are... It's not charities, but uh, the Central Valley Alliance of Atheists and Skeptics does have meetups in Fresno, California. Uh, one is on November 16th, which is tomorrow from this upload date. Um, and I have all the information. Uh, November 18th, uh, they also have another thing. They're doing a movie night. And December 3rd, uh, they're doing a business meeting. I don't know if you're invited to that one. But, <laughs> but uh, so there are in Fresno, uh, within your city limits, there are people that you can reach out to, and maybe they will know. I'm not suggesting you try to... Stay in their attics or anything, or their guest rooms, but uh, they may know someone or something or a shelter if you actually can't live there anymore, like you're being forced out. So no, I just if wanted to, and if you just can't bear it, I would just stop because you have to live there. Yeah, and are you the one instigating this, or is he instigating this? Right. It sounds like also, probably you're saying, just an antagonistic relationship in general. Maybe, but also you're saying he has a degree in psychology, which is, you know, a degree that takes a while to get, and you don't have a job, which makes me think you're not living with parents or anything. It makes me think you're living in his house, mm -hmm. you don't have a job. Mm -hmm. But I don't know I, mean, I don't know the situation. What... I don't know either. I also don't know your age. It yeah, depends. You could be are you a 14 child? or are you like 35 and living in your brother's house, and he's like, please get a job. Sure. So I don't know. Uh, but I wanted to make sure that I covered that just in case, because you asked. There you go. So, uh, yeah, and if anybody else needs to know, a quick Google search for city, uh, whatever city you're in, or area, and then atheist group, I guarantee you, not a far drive away, there's probably something where they will have, uh, resources for you, at least as far as information is concerned. Sure. Um, I know a lot of people all over the country like this, so... <laughs> Again, from the Discord, Casual Cali. Look at that. that there's a fucking it's from furry Twitter, it's actually. A, oh, is it from Twitter? Yeah. Furry picture, too. Okay. Can you please give Hugo three objects of similar math to juggle in the next video? I actually requested he bring apples, but instead, without even knowing he was going to do this, he actually brought real-life juggling balls. These are my old ones, so they're kind of floppy. Oh. And see how worn out they are, yeah. actually? All right, oh, here God. goes. Uh, yeah. Wait, wait. Oh, whoa! Whoa! So talented! This is gonna take you far! Ooh! Just know that he kicked it and it was fun.
You did a hacky sack thing? Good job. All right, there's your there's your request. I don't have any skill. I can do two. I can do two, but it, it's not actual juggling. It's, it's just you hand it. I can also do two. Well, of course. I hope so. You can do three. Yeah. I could probably do that, but I have This is all juggling with three balls is. It's just you're changing out one of the balls every time to another hand. So, yeah. there's the trick, folks. Yeah. Now, I can shoot a basketball, though. Yeah, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Last one. From Twitter, Thanksgiving. How extreme would someone's politics have to be before you stop being friends with them, not being friends with them in the first place? I have a that's real a, life example. It's a good, it's a good, it's a good question. I uh, haven't talked to my father since January. Yeah, yeah. That's the answer. Yeah. The kind of person who he is. Yeah, but that's not just a, vo a Trump voter. It's beyond Trump voter. Oh yeah. <laughs> He's also just a garbage piece of shit human being with no fucking empathy for others. So there's that. Wow, you're only you're only at fifty percent here too. I know. Nice. Okay. The anxiety medication has helped me great. <laughs> so for me, uh, it doesn't have to be like I could be friends with people that are on the opposite side necessarily. Um, it, to me, it's when your decency is in question. Yeah. And so, like, if you just disagree on, you know, if you think trickle down works, first of all, you're wrong. But because it just doesn't work. Second of all, um, that doesn't mean that we can't be friends. It just means you hate success. And then, uh, but like, if that extends to like you don't want gays to get married, I'm starting to have an issue with you. And then if it means that like, you know, the blacks are bad. Well, then we definitely can't be friends. So stuff like that, because there is correlation. Now, I'm not saying people on the left can't be racist or homophobic, because they definitely can. Turfs are a thing. Um, they don't, you know. Uh, what I don't remember what the last part means. I don't remember what the, the last part of the acronym is, but it's trans-exclusionary something-something. Uh, basically, it's people on the left that are like, yeah, fuck trans people. What? Yeah, also <laughs> there's plenty of conservative gay people that are like, yeah, fuck trans people. They're weirdos. It's like... You take a dick up the ass. You take a dick in your asshole, and you're like, the person who wears different clothes and wants titties is weird. My, my guy. Yeah. You're just as weird. Like, and I still love you. Go marry your, you know, boyfriend. But, like, I if he wants to dress up like a girl sometimes, like, fuck it, who cares? Like, <laughs> If they identify as a woman, it's okay. Like it doesn't matter. I don't. I don't know why that matters to people. That's why I fundamentally can't get touch base with like conservative mentality because yeah. I cannot. Give, they want libertarianism, get, but, but theirs. But not no, no, because they don't. What they yeah, want is oh, they want everyone to do what they want them to do, yeah. and anything outside of their comfortable zones, they're like no. There are things I'm not comfortable with, but I'd never be like. Unless it's hurting someone yeah. against their will, because there are consensual activities that hurt people. Um, well, I'm not comfortable with 18-year-olds fighting my wars. Sure. But that's what we have, so... I'm not comfortable with a lot of things to yeah, cover. Yeah, I'm not comfortable with drones, necessarily. I'm more comfortable with that than a ground war, however. Interesting. So... I don't know. But, you know, it's... it's my... It's, my it's, I would say my line for people is the minute that their bel their political beliefs mm -hmm. start to morph into just a difference of opinion and start to turn into, I don't care if this hurts another person, it benefits me. Right. And that's the kind of person I cut out of my life. Yeah. The kind of person who too. has no regard, like, I don't care that this is going to hurt this group. No. I will benefit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Unless, unless... I guess it's not so much hurt, and it's more like healthcare. Yep. I think that doesn't hurt you; it makes you have less money. <laughs> yeah, but you're you can go get a doctor visit, sure, for well, free, but you know. Yeah, so, I think whatever helps the most people is what I'm on board with, typically. Also, if you use the term "urban" as code for black people, unironically. <laughs> That doesn't help. So anyway, yeah. I think that's it. Uh, you can always follow us on Twitter at Bible Reloaded for this guy right here. You can follow Hugo Reloaded for him right there. Uh, feel free to uh, interact with us on the Twitter machine because we like it. Yeah. 
You can also donate to our Patreon. We do a once a month patron only hangout. Which Coming is, up soon. Yeah. And we're probably going to have to do a commentary soon, right? Where we do a uh, first viewing uh, thing for patrons. Sure. It's been a little bit since we had one of those for them. Yep. So if you're if you wanna if you wanna get in on extra content, come on, be a patron. Also, we're really close to our goal to do a Harold Penisman show, uh, and we got other stuff going on. Uh, we're gonna start a podcast thing soon. We gotta talk about that. Okay. So until next time, you go. I'm Jake. Jake reads a number. I was really courteous, real nice. My grandma's house. Without the racism.